Hey guys, Jasmine of IPS. Today we're talking about what is the healthcare revenue cycle. We're going to split this video up into a few different parts so that we can take a deep dive into each specific element. Do this properly. All right. So after an insurance company has accepted your claim and either paid it or denied it, if they've decided that perhaps the patient's benefit don't, does not allow, you would receive an explanation of benefits or an explanation of payment or an explanation of remittance. All these shorthand things just means it's going to be an explanation of what the insurance company's decision is. You'll receive that either electronically if you're enrolled in ERAs, which I will link below my other video discussing what ERAs are, very important that you look at getting ERAs, but you will either receive that electronically or you will receive that paper remittance or that paper EOB. So um, I recommend that if you have ERAs, that you have those transmitting directly to your clearinghouse. Don't request an insurance company to uh, submit a raw file to you if you can avoid it. A lot of clearinghouses these days are so robust in what they can do and they can, you can even have a very um, robust denial management system, something that is pretty helpful in the, in the process. If you are dealing with a lot of claim denials, it will do a phenomenal job or these clearinghouses can do a phenomenal job at organizing the data for you and actually telling you what your denial trends are and what types of denials that they see most frequently and and um, you know how quickly you're resolving your denials so all of this data that you can receive from your clearinghouse if in fact your software is is not so effective at that type of uh, denial management so if you are receiving paper EOBs, you obviously might lose that, pro that, that process or that, that um, bonus that, that comes into play when you're working with a clearinghouse and ERAs. So when you have ERAs coming through the clearinghouse, um, you, in most cases with an ERA processing tool in your software, can import or bring in those ERAs directly into your software so that they then can be posted or auto posted in some cases to patients accounts. Um, I always recommend whether or not you auto post that you definitely have somebody manually reviewing what the software is doing with that data. You will find that in a lot of cases, the insurance companies, they, they might transmit some errors, some, something that's not quite right in their file that your software may not know what to do with it, and it might go in out of whack, or perhaps the software might have some flaws in which it actually processes an ERA and writes off the entire balance, which you never want to see that especially if you um, don't have a way of really easily checking back on, on, on uh, pieces like that. If the software is writing off an entire visit, then that might be money that you've lost. And unless someone manually goes to that patient's account and notices that, it, it's gone into thin air. When a patient's visit's written off completely, it does not appear on your aging reports, which we'll talk about now. <laughs> 